Hello there, healthcare humans. Thank you so much for coming back for another episode of The Other Human in the Room. Okay, so today we are talking about what to do when you make a mistake. Anyone else feel a little nervous about this topic? I will share that I do um, because I'm going to get vulnerable with you all and confess I have made mistakes in medicine. I have focused too narrowly on a presenting issue and missed a diagnosis. I have had suspicions but not followed through on things and then later it was confirmed okay that was something that um, potentially would have had a different outcome if I'd acted earlier. Um, I have forgotten to finish important tasks for patients that resulted in delayed patient care. Um, and I have ordered likely too many investigations for something that ended up not needing them. And I am aware that that causes delays in our healthcare system. So those are the kinds of things when I think, when I say I've made mistakes, it feels super scary to admit that out loud on a recorded podcast, because we're really conditioned to fear the consequences of making a mistake. Like right now in my brain, I'm like, okay, you've just admitted very vaguely, not specifically, but I, vaguely you've admitted you've made mistakes. What if someone hears you and then sues you or um, makes a college complaint against you? What if, um, you know, having had made a mistake in the past, now a patient's going to come and yell at me and say, see, I knew you made a mistake. And all of you listening as my respected colleagues, what if some of you are judging me because I've said I've made mistakes? Like, honestly, those are the kinds of worries I have in my mind. And I know I'm not alone because it's so common in stories I hear from colleagues and certainly my coaching clients um, and people who come to my workshops. This is something that has got a deep shame story around it and a fear story around it. The consequences of making mistakes are so high. Never mind. Do you notice that I didn't even mention like that someone could die, <laughs> which obviously is the ultimate goal. We don't want too many errors. If there are errors we can avoid in healthcare, that is ideal because our work is important. It is high stakes a lot of the time. People suffering and lives can be on the line. So obviously we don't want to make mistakes. But sometimes I get such hyper focus that we don't know what to do when we do make a mistake. And we have this inhuman story running in us that it's completely unacceptable to make a mistake in medicine. Basically, I feel like I was conditioned to believe if I make a mistake anywhere in my life, frankly, but especially in medicine, especially in healthcare, I'm a bad person, like a wrong, bad, evil person, and like immediately should get kicked out of medicine. That's like where my brain goes. It immediately floods me with all the ways that I'm going to like lose my job and be publicly shamed and slandered. Honestly, I, I feel flooded with guilt and shame. And when I'm, when my, this story is running inside of me, so say I have made a mistake with a patient. And like I said, I have made mistakes with patients. It, it really colors my ability to continue to practice the kind of medicine that I want to, like, especially with that patient, if I have made an error in their care in the past, whether they know about it or not. But I think especially if they are aware that I made a, a mistake in their care, um, I get so anxious about making another mistake that I'm distracted and I'm not listening as closely and I feel so much guilt and shame about making the mistake that I want to get out of the room as quickly as possible to like avoid being reminded of the mistake I made. And the time I do spend in the room is like got this undercurrent of trying to like make it up to them and pleasing them to make sure that they're not still mad at me for making the mistake. And guess what, guys? When I'm doing all of that, I'm not really listening to my patient. When I'm doing all of that, my brain is so distracted with these other agendas of trying to help me feel better because I feel so flooded with guilt and shame and anxiety. I'm not using my highest and best brain power to solve whatever problem the patient has brought for me that day. And then unfortunately, all that means I'm more likely to make another mistake. It's this really vicious cycle that a lot of us end up in. Most of us beat ourselves up so badly when we make a mistake that we don't actually even learn from it. If these memories of past mistakes sit as sources of shame and fear, they don't make us more aware of our biases and cognitive errors. They actually just make them more likely to 
perpetuate. They make us more reactive and defensive in our practice of medicine. And that makes our brain more error prone, not less, right? I've talked about it, about this on a previous podcast. In this one, I really want to focus on what happens when we do make a mistake, because hopefully by now you're aware that some of the default ways your brain reacts to making a mistake aren't serving you, and they're actually leaving you more likely and more prone to making more mistakes, which to be clear, I am not arguing that we should aim for more mistakes. The whole point of this is that how do we actually aim for less mistakes? How do we actually aim to get our brains back into its most brilliant, calm, curious mode so that we can be as focused in these encounters and in focused in our healthcare as possible, do our best work, and therefore avoid mistakes that otherwise we might have made. That's the goal. And the way it starts is when we make a mistake, how do we react to ourselves, right? Because usually our default reaction is thinking it's the mistake itself and whatever consequences came from the mistake, that that is what's causing our guilt and shame and anxiety. But it's actually the worry, the worry belief underneath that we have about the mistake that's causing the guilt, shame, and anxiety, right? In a different context, we can be totally accepting of making mistakes. Think of a kid learning to ride a bike, right? If every time they wobbled or fell down, if they someone yelled at them and they yelled at themselves and told themselves they were terrible cyclists and should be ashamed of themselves and they were useless and hopeless and would never ride a bike again and they better be extra careful next time and make sure they don't wobble a single second and just like, you know, the stakes are so high and if you will fall down one more time, then you're out of here. Do you think that's going to help a child learn to ride a bike? And does anyone in this world teach a child to ride a bike that way? <laughs> I hope not. I'm sure it's not very successful, right? But it's a lot of actually how we were trained, maybe not with riding a bike, but a lot of other things, especially in school. I mean, this comes to us, honestly, it, it's in how we were taught. And especially in medical training, I find it happens so much where there's so much pressure to not make a mistake that I don't know if our teachers know this, but we are really, we're making it more likely that we would make a mistake, unfortunately, Right. This fear of making mistakes is our perfectionism. That's what I'm really talking about. And as I've established in previous podcasts, it's a tool of oppression that's used to disconnect us from our humanity. And it is a very terrible tool if we want to stop making mistakes, if we want to actually learn and hone our skills as clinicians and become more skillful, thoughtful, knowledgeable clinicians. Our fear of mistakes is actually the thing holding us back, not the mistakes themselves, but our fear of making them. If we can find a new belief about mistakes that doesn't activate fear, but something else, that, and, and that something else, that other emotion being something that serves us like curiosity, compassion, motivation, confidence. If we can, instead of activating fear when we make mistakes, learn the process to activate some of those other emotions instead. Th those other emotions, these authentic, feel good, motivating emotions, these are the ones that will actually activate the learning parts of our brain. And when our learning parts of our brain are turned on instead of our survival brain, that is when we can actually cognitively reflect on the mistake without making that mistake mean we're terrible or a threat to our security or happiness, then we will learn from our mistake, develop deeper self-trust to offer us self-compassion no matter how many more mistakes we make in the future. And in this particular case, whatever mistake we've made, we'll say, oh, was there something about the environment or how I was thinking or how my workflow was set up that likely contributed to the chance of me making a mistake? Hmm. I'm curious about it because I'm not beating myself up. I'm just like, whoa, how did that happen? Interesting. Let me look at it. What could be, what could be altered next time to lower my chance of making a mistake? Not because mistakes are death, but because mistakes are, you know, a sign that our desired outcome didn't happen. Right? So I wanted to give you a concrete example of how I've used this recently. 
So sometimes when I renew a prescription, I don't read the request closely enough. I give it a scan. And especially if it looks like it's the same medication they've always been on. And then I just fax it off. But sometimes I, I, I've missed, you know, the small writing that says they've actually switched pharmacies, or I've missed that they actually are on a slightly different dose than what I have in the chart. And so then I get a call from the patient or a fax back saying that I've made this mistake. I used to feel like so much shame and I feel terrible about myself for making these mistakes. I'd think what's wrong with me. This is such a simple thing. Look at what you've done. Now you've created more work for yourself, not noticing that that self beration was yet more work I was giving to myself anyways. So, and it would make me maybe a bit more vigilant about checking, but only for a little while. And honestly, what it did instead longer term was make me really dread prescription renewals. Cause I'm like, I'm bad at prescription renewals. I'm always making these mistakes. And my brain just learned to almost like avoid them and procrastinate them. And when I was doing a prescription renewal, I'd rush through them because I'd be like, well, I'm bad at them anyway. So ironically, it would make it more likely that I'd make the same mistake again, because I was just sort of like rushing through it. And I was just trying to avoid the feeling of being terrible at it. Right. But now that I know that that mistake of sending it to the wrong pharmacy or sending the wrong dose doesn't mean I'm a terrible person or that I can't trust my brain, but instead it just means that I've been conditioned to believe a false story that mistakes equal I'm a bad person. So now I've started getting curious with myself about what led to that mistake and what would support my brain, what my brain needs to actually fill the attention gap that's leading me to make, take in the whole request and double check it, right? We think we need to do this out of this hypervigilance, like I'm never going to make this mistake again, right? Da, 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 da. And that works for a minute until our brain gets hypervigilant and focused on something else. And we haven't actually learned underneath what was causing that mistake. And also we spend our entire day feeling like hypervigilant and anxious and terrible about ourselves. So if instead with each mistake we make, we go, we can, we'll have our initial reaction of shame or guilt or fear or whatever process those emotions and say, okay, how do I get curious with myself here? Looking back at it, what happened? Oh, right. I went back to an old habit of just trying to renew prescription requests quickly in between patients, but my full brain isn't actually turned on when I'm doing it that way. And I'm half distracted and someone's talking to me at the same time. Right. So that's probably why I'm not really reading the whole request. So what if I go back to a previous um, habit that was working for me where I really only do prescription requests when I have dedicated time for it? I sit I'm focused specifically and explicitly on this. I'm drinking a mug of tea that feels good. And I just look at it one at a time. And I, and I coach myself, take your time, take the time you need, read, look next and, and ha be a bit more intentional and thoughtful about it. And then I try that and see if that helps me reduce the number of times I'm making this error. And surprise, surprise, it does, does re uh, reduce the amount of errors I make this way, which makes a lot of sense, right? But if I'm like beating myself up the whole time, even if I try and switch and do like dedicated inbox time, if I'm beating myself up the whole time, I'm probably still going to make the error because I'm rushing through it because I don't want to feel that yucky feeling. So it's interesting if you like are willing to, to meet your yucky feeling head on to start, process that so you can shift into a more curious, confident feeling, and then take different actions out of that place. That is how you'll actually learn what you need to avoid making that mistake again. So this is what I'm offering you in terms of a new strategy and a new healing human story that you can use when you make a mistake. So not only, this is the story, not only is it inevitable that we will make mistakes, but it serves us to be open and accepting and curious about the mistakes we do make. So we don't have to be shocked when we make mistakes because we are human and humans make mistakes. And in our work in healthcare, our goal is to make as few mistakes as possible. So how can we do that with curiosity and acceptance for ourselves, understanding of course, how human of me to make a mistake, process that emotion, offer myself self-compassion, and then focus in on that particular mistake and say, what were the circumstances of that? How could I potentially avoid or at least reduce the risk of that happening again? Sometimes there will be a way to do it. But honestly, also sometimes there's not. So a lot of the things we actually call mistakes 
we, we can only identify as mistakes after the fact. Some of the things I actually said up front, um, I don't even really call mistakes anymore because like all you can do is your best in any given moment with all the information you have and then make a decision, right? Some things that in retrospect feel like mistakes, we literally didn't have all the information we needed to make a different decision, right? You never have to make yourself wrong in the past to learn and do differently in the future. In fact, it is much easier and more effective to love and accept that past decision, understanding it made sense why you did it, and then think about what you can learn next time. So I gave that prescription example as a start. In that one, you can kind of see it is like an error because sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't. But when I look back at the other kinds of mistakes I talked about up front, for example, a diagnosis I missed, when I hold myself with self-compassion and get curious and look back, I honestly can't imagine that if I'd researched a little more or thought a little longer, I would have necessarily come up with the correct diagnosis sooner. In some of the ones that my brain wants to beat me up as mistakes, I'm like, honestly, that condition is so rare. And there were things that were more likely to be it. So how can it be a mistake for me to presume it's the more common thing while keeping my brain open to the possibility of something rarer? Was it even a mistake, right? So now that I've seen what I've seen and offered love to my past self for not seeing it, that experience is part of my learning. So maybe next time, you know, something comes up, it seems common. I may take an extra moment to pause and be like, okay, what's something rare this could possibly be? Have I asked all my red flags? How, you know, could it be? But I'm not going to now, you know, order an MRI on everyone just in case I might find something rare that I happen to miss and then find later on another person. We can use learning from mistakes in this way that actually ends up making us practice poorer forms of healthcare. If we think that everything that we missed is actually a mistake, right? So that's a piece of offering ourselves that self-compassion and acceptance first. I have started renaming my mistakes as undesired outcomes. Cause then I can sit with the sadness and discomfort of witnessing something that I wanted to go one way that ended up going another way my two examples. So with the prescription renewals, what I wanted was to get that prescription renewal off my desk as quickly as possible, get my patients the medication they needed and not have it bounce back at me. And then I didn't have that desired outcome in, case, in this case, it bounced back at me. Okay. So I can beat myself up for that. Or I can say, was there something I could have done to prevent this bounce back? And in this case, yeah, there's sort of a procedural systemic system thing going on with me that I could make a shift of to reduce my chance of it happening again. Sometimes I look back at diagnosis I may though. Sometimes I look back at the diagnosis and I say, ah, I see how, you know, I the anchoring bias happened. The patient came in and they thought it was this thing and I followed them along. And next time I'll just make sure if they're coming in with a presumed diagnosis, I notice that anchoring bias happening to me. I take a step back and say, is there anything else that could be happening? But honestly, the one I have in my head, I don't think in a million years I could have guessed what the diagnosis ended up being. Maybe I would have noticed that the person wasn't getting better a little sooner, and maybe I would have checked a little sooner, maybe. But if I'm looking back with self-criticism and shame, I'm not going to even see any lessons I could have learned from that, from that case and that patient. And I will certainly be using it as evidence that I'm a bad clinician, which makes it more likely I'm going to miss the next very nuanced, hard to find diagnosis, right? But if I say to myself, you did your best you could, you, you offered the care that seemed right at the time. It's okay to continue to do that now because this one case doesn't mean that you're a bad clinician. This one case really has nothing to do with your skill as a clinician. It was one case, you know, and you can feel sad that this undesired ha outcome happened to the patient. Process that feeling and then offer myself back the trust to continue to choose and decide what I think is best for each patient at this point, right? 
So the skill of compassionate debriefing is one way I call it. It's, it's actually really important. I think this is how we can continue to grow in our confidence and our skill and our knowledge that will allow us to show up as even more, I'm trying not to use the word better clinician because I think you are one now, but like feel like we have more confidence, feel like we have more skills to draw from. Certainly every time I have had an undesired outcome with a patient that informs and can really help me learn and have actually more confidence with the next patient, even saying, trust me, I've seen this before. This is something we should or shouldn't check because of what I've seen before. Right. So, um, the skill of compassionate debriefing is how we stop using our mistakes as evidence of being terrible, which ends up making us make more mistakes as I've established, right? And instead using them to help us make less mistakes and to, and to reframe things as not mistakes, but lessons and learning more about this incredibly complicated practice that we do when we practice medicine. The skill is challenging on our own though, because of all of our past conditioning to beat ourselves up and we can just find ourselves caught in these worry loops and these like self berration loops about like, yeah, but I can't make that mistake again. I can never make a mistake again. I'm such a bad person. Everyone's going to find out that I'm such a fraud, you know, the whole shebang. And so that's why I spend time recording podcasts like this one to hopefully help remind you to debrief your, your mistakes with compassion. And this is why I take it even f- more steps. I, I specifically walk through a process of compassionate debriefing with my clients. Um, and in particular, it's one of the focuses of my new coaching program, Stop Worrying About Your Patients. That's the name of the program, Stop Worrying About Your Patients. So you will notice you stop losing sleep worrying about your patients when you change your story about clinical errors. Suddenly, there'll be a lot less to worry about if you understand, I made the decisions I made today. It's possible some of them will have an undesired outcome. I know I'll be able to offer myself compassion and confidence and self-trust again, even if it happens. That means I don't have to lay awake now worrying if something bad will happen to the patient. I've done what I can do. And tomorrow, if I learn that something I've done didn't turn out the way I wish, I will trust that I can handle it and learn from it, but it won't mean I'm a bad clinician. You don't have to stay up worrying as, as late at night if that's the story you have running in your head, right? So if this sounds like work you really need, I um, invite you to consider applying for my one-on-one coaching program, Stop Worrying About Your Patients. And you will find the link of where you can apply to that in the show notes of this podcast or at joanchanmd.com. I so look forward to reading your application. And for those of you where this work isn't ready for you, but you are interested in doing more compassionate debriefing, I just invite you the next time you make a mistake, instead of trying to explain it away or obsess about it for a million years, pause, offer yourself compassion and ask you, ask yourself, what do you want to learn from it? And how can you not make it mean if you're a good or bad clinician, how is this an undesired outcome? And is there anything you can learn from this that may change the likelihood of this outcoming happening again, but your worth as a human and your worth as a clinician is not on the line. I hope that's helpful for you as you continue to navigate this complex work we do together, taking care of these other humans. Take care.